The case of the Central Park Five remains controversial, but for the five men still alive in that case, who endured years of imprisonment for a crime they did not commit, they're asking for closure. And thus, this news conference at New York's City Hall. There is now a call for reparations of sorts. The case of the Central Park Five was one of racial overtones in a then crime-plagued city. A white female resident and a financial district worker brutally raped and beaten in New York Central Park. It shocked the city with the arrest of five young black male suspects, all of them teenagers. The story dominated the headlines for months, leading to a trial, and each man, later found innocent, was convicted and sentenced for a crime they did not commit. One of the five was Raymond Santana, who asked, Where's our justice? We have seen five mayors now. Where's our justice? When is it time to finally close this case? And we're not here to speak about money. We're here to speak about closure. We're here to speak about healing. It was not only healing, but bringing what has been a nightmare to an end, said Kevin Richardson. We want to put a closure to this whole situation because it's been too long. They thought we would not be here speaking. They thought we would be six feet right now or still in the prison cells. But God sees evil. He sees everything. And I just want to say that uh, we're going to keep fighting until this thing is closed. That's right. And I love everyone for, for being here, but it's not over because the struggle still not continues. Over. Everywhere else is another City Park 5. There's a City Park 5 everywhere. So we must put a closure and a stop to this before this happens again. One way of ensuring that, said attorney Michael Warren, is to keep issues of injustice in the public eye. A cumulative 37 years of prison was meted out in total to the innocent five, and no price tag will ever cover what has been lost. Yet, Warren told Sahara Television, We've sued for 50 million for each, uh, including uh, their families as well, because they suffered. Uh, but, but I think that, that what I tried to illustrate uh, is, is that you can never ever reclaim the value uh, of what was snatched away from you. And here, the value of what was snatched away was a childhood. Indeed, a childhood lost, snatched away by New York's criminal justice system. Among the five young men, Youssef Salam may well be the most elegant of the group, sharing with us the challenges leading up to and following a conviction in a crime none of them committed. Salam told us. Years ago, we're talking about 25 years, there was overwhelming support against us. Anywhere we went, whether we rode the trains, the buses, or walked down the blocks, we were highly recognizable because there were so many, um, there was like over 400 articles written prior to us even, being, even going to trial. And many of the articles that were written were very negative. And as you can imagine, it left the negative residue in the minds of the people to think that we were somehow guilty of something. We were the scum of the earth. We became the other, as I sometimes talk about. But now all five men have been cleared and the public reaction for them has been like night and day, Salam said. Even folks who um, were staunch enemies of ours are now staunch supporters. And I mean, for us to have that kind of support is amazing. People never asked us who we were, where we came from, who our parents were. They never, they, they always wrote about us. They always drew us in many ways that made people believe and think that we were evil. But when they hear us for the first time and see us in reality, it's, it, it's, it's mind boggling. Sometimes they say to themselves, they can't understand how did they get, how did we get tricked into believing these guys were who they were, but this is really who they are. And who they really are to the people of New York, America, and the world are five men attempting to rebuild their lives and overcoming a misuse of power on the part of police and a governmental structure in the criminal justice system that was, arguably, a miscarriage of justice. The issue of what to do in righting this miscarriage of justice now sits in the hands of New York's mayor, Bill de Blasio, and the court system in a case the whole world continues to watch. Eric Williams, Sahara TV, New York.